Hello everyone, today is April 8th and this is going to be your um, lesson on using special factors to solve quadratic equations. So the first part here that we have to talk about is what is a perfect square trinomial. And that the definition of a perfect square trinomial is any trinomial that can be factored, like that's using the cross method, can be factored to look like a binomial squared. And you have to remember that a binomial squared is just something that looks like this. Remember that that little 2, you means write it twice. So this is actually a binomial squared. So any trinomial, so any trinomial could be something like x squared plus 5x plus 25. So any trinomial here that gives you a binomial squared. So given this, gives you this. So going from here to here, and it has to look like that. has to look like that. So let's go ahead and... Um, take a look below here at this first example. So example one says determine if the following are perfect square trinomials. So they give us in this table here or in this chart, they give us what the trinomial looks like and then they give us what the factored form looks like. And then they want us to say, okay, is this a perfect square trinomial, yes or no? So given this one, given this trinomial and the factored form, so we could see they had this trinomial, they factored it, they did the cross method and then they ended up with x plus 3 squared. We should see that this is a, a binomial squared because this x plus 3 means that if you follow me below here, I can just write it twice. So then, yes, this is a perfect squared trinomial. And then we could switch colors here, and let's move on to the next one. Let's look at the next one. So now we have our second one here, right here, the purple dot is. If we're given this trinomial, that factors this way, that in fact is x minus 1, x plus 3, is that a perfect square trinomial? And the answer should be no, because we do not see our little square here. We don't have any squared, it's not written together, it's two separate factors. So the answer is just immediately no. And then I hope you're picking up the hang of it now. On the third one here, let's take a look at the last one. I'm right here at this dark blue dot. Given this perfect square trinomial, that factors to this form, is this, a, is this a perfect square? Does this give me a binomial squared? And the answer should be yes, because I could see that little 2 here, which again means that you write it twice. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So the answer is yes. Okay, so then hopefully um, you should have taken away from this page that given a trinomial, um, it could factor to a binomial squared, and then on the next page we're actually going to learn how to factor these perfect square trinomials. How can we identify them um, a little bit faster? Okay, so let's give me a second here. Let me switch pages. Okay, and then we add a layer here. Okay, so let's get started. So now we're actually, well, I'm on the wrong page. Give me a second. Two. Okay, so let's go ahead and start right up here with the perfect squares. I need another layer. Okay, so factoring here. So there's actually um, a pretty simple way to factor them, and that's just by using a multiplication in your head to think about is it a perfect square or not. But if you struggle with multiplication or if you are struggling with any of this, you can always, always resort to the cross method, which we've been doing now for a few weeks. So you should be masters at it, the cross method, so you can always do that. The first step here, so let's go ahead and start here with number one. The first step is always looking, is there GCF? Is there GCF? So let's go ahead and look. We're going to see, do they share any numbers that they're all divisible by? Are 2, 12, and 18 all divisible by, the same num by some same number? The answer is yes. The answer is 2. So that means that I could take out um, a 2. Let me undo that really quick. A 2. And then I could also look to take out a letter. So I see that I have y3, y2, and y1, which means that the least amount they all share is 1. So I could take out a y, which leaves me with, if I take out 2y from 2y cubed, I'm left with just y squared. If I take out 2y from 12y squared, I'm left with 6y. If I take out 2y from 18y, I'm left with 9. So then now I'm left with my factor, my GCF that I took out, if I multiplied this back in, I'd end up with the same trinomial from the beginning. And then I have my actual factorable one that I want to look at here now. So here's going to be the quick way at identifying and factoring 
perfect square trinomials is to take the square root of this term, so square root of y squared, and to take the square root of this term, of 9. If they are perfect squares, then you should have no problem and you should be right on your way. So let's take a look at what is the square root of y squared. And we should know that there's a little 2 here. That means that these 2's can cancel. So I'm left with just y. So I know the square root of y squared is y, which is great news. I didn't have any problems there. I could put that in parentheses. And then I could take the square root of 9, which I know is 3. I could put that on the other half. And then I can just put a plus in the middle because I see I have a plus sign here, so I know I have no problems here. And I also have a plus sign here, so I know that this all has to be positive. And then, of course, because it came out perfectly clean, both ends were perfect squares, then I know that I have to have my square here because that is a perfect square trinomial. Okay, and then, of course, if you didn't understand that, you can always use cross method. Identify A, B, and C, draw your cross, and then go from there. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So let's take a look up here at number two. Number two here. We're going to start with the same thing. Is there a GCF of this problem? So let's look at the numbers first. 100, 20, and 1. Are those all divisible by the same number? The answer is yes. They're all divisible by a number, but they're all divisible by 1. So that means that there actually isn't any number that I could take out. And then let's look at our letters here. We see that this has Z2, Z1, and then no Zs. So then we know that they don't share any Zs because this one over here doesn't have a Z. So I'm just going to go straight to my perfect square trinomial method. I'm going to check, does this first term, is this first term a perfect square? How do I check that? I take square root. Okay. And I'm also going to check this one as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and take the square root, square root of our a term, which is 100z squared. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this. This is a z here. What is the square root of 100? This is a 2 out here. What number times itself twice is 100? And that answer should be 10. And then we should also know that this 2 here is going to cancel out because of this 2 out front here and leaves us with just a z. So now I know the square root of 100z, the square root of this term, gave me 10z. Let's go ahead and move on to the square root of 1. I'll bring this down. Square root of 1. And the square root of 1 is, should be very simple. What number times itself twice is 1, and that answer is 1. So now I have my new set of parentheses. Since they both were perfect squares, I know it's going to be a binomial. So I have my binomial 2 here. That's a crazy looking 2. And then now I have to think about what sign I should have in the middle here. I have a negative here and a positive on the outside. So then I know that this has to be a negative because when I write this out twice, I'll end up with a negative in the middle because 10z times 10z or 10z times 10z is 100z squared. And then 1 times 10z is negative 10z negative 10z plus negative 10z is negative 20z, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So what I just did there, I know that was probably confusing, is I just wrote out, or I just did in my head, all this, all this math again. I wrote it out twice in my head, and I re-multiplied everything, redistributed all these binomials, and I ended up with the exact same thing. So that's how you check your work as well. Alrighty, um, let's go ahead and move down here to difference of squares. So the next part here is going to be actually a little bit simpler, um, and that's going to be difference of squares. So let's go ahead and talk about those. So difference of squares is another term for basically a perfect square, except for they have this special form. So you can see it here. It takes the place of a squared minus b squared, and it's always written like this. So this one is a little bit differently written. However, you'll notice that a and a both appear in both factors, and b and b both appear in both factors. The only thing different here is one is a plus and one is a minus, hence the difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a few of these. So we're following the same thing. We're just squaring everything, basically. So let's go ahead and take the square root of this one, the square root of x squared, and we'll get the square root of x squared is x. So then I know that this will have to have an x in this parenthesis, 
and an x in that parenthesis. The square root of 9, I said the square root of 9 is 3, so then I'll have 3 and 3, and then I get a plus and I get a minus. So I get a plus and I get a minus. And then that's that whole problem. So these ones are a little bit simpler. Let's go ahead and try another one here. So let's go ahead and do b. So I'll take the square root of 4x squared. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of x is x, or x squared is x. So I'll have 2x. I know I have a 2x in both. And then I'll take the square root of 9 again. The square root of 9 is 3. And then I know I have a plus and have a minus. And then that's that for that question. And let's move on to the last one. And I'll have the same thing here. Square root of 9x squared. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of x squared is x. So I have 3x, 3x. And then I have the square root of 1, which is 1. And then I have a plus and I have a minus. So then that is difference of squares. So takeaways from here. You should notice that all of these only had two terms. They only had two terms to start with, which is a huge difference from the ones that we just worked with that had three terms. The difference of squares should be super quick. You just do the square root in your head real quick, and then you can move on. Keep that in mind. Difference of squares has two terms. Perfect square trinomials have three terms.